In discussions of hard hammer and soft hammer techniques, it's often observed that the difference is that in the hard hammer technique, the bulb of percussion is, is much more pronounced, and that in the soft hammer technique of removing flakes, that uh, the bulb of percussion is, is, uh, is smaller, the flake is thinner and, and wider. And yet people describing these two techniques will often say that there uh, are, are indeed people that use a hard hammer that can get what looks like a, a soft hammer effect of flake remo removal. This thinning flake, you see the cortex on the outside, uh, was done by hard hammer. In fact, it was, it was done by this big guy right here. And um, you'll notice that the, the point of incidence of the hammer is this tiny, tiny little spot there, and there's almost nothing of what looks like a bulb of percussion. This flake, not only was this flake done with a hard hammer, but the flake before it that came off right here, peeled off that part, was hard hammer, and this flake peeling off here. See how wide, flat, thin, and how lack of uh, pronounced bulb or percussion that there is. Everything on this table is hard hammer percussion. Check out the, the size of this flake. And you'll notice that the, that the bulb of percussion is actually right here. The point of impact was an extremely small point, but it's a wide, flat, broad flake, and it's taken off with a hard hammer, as are all of these. They are all taken from the very, very edge of the of this rock being struck. This, this piece right here, for example, um, the flake to be taken off was right here. It was just scraped and peeled off. And you can see how broad a flake it is and how little of the, the width is compromised in a situation like this. And the, the thing that is different about this, uh, the, the, way, the way this hard hammer works in taking off what you would otherwise think of as a soft hammer flake, um, which is true of, as I said, e everything here, um, is that in the, in the usual hard hammer approach, the impactor strikes the platform slightly in from the edge, maybe as much as an eighth or even a quarter of an inch from the edge, and it, it makes a, a conchoidal fracture and uh, forces a break at that point. Instead of hitting it uh, an eighth of an inch in, or a sixteenth of an inch in, or, or even uh, a thirty-second of an inch in, these are all struck on the exact edge itself. Take a look at this. In this case, um, there was only one possible point that could have been struck and taken off a flake, and that is that point right there. You'll see how close everything else is to it and uh, anything that didn't hit exactly the edge would have uh, created an awful lot of damage. But, in fact, this flake touches only the edge. And so this basal thinning flake just peels off. And uh, that is the, is the, is the nature of the, of the hard hammer um, uh, the technique that look that looks like a soft hammer end result, and that the the whole difference in the size and thickness of the flake is how robust the platform is um, on which you're striking, even though you're touching just exactly the edge. In this particular flake, the uh, the the point that it was struck was just this very very edge itself, and it created this this large and relatively thick, but still flat um, flake. It looks an awful lot like a, a Levallois flake from the Mousterian 
uh, tradition. But all of this is a uh, hard hammer, and I'm going to show you just exactly how that, that har hard hammer stroke is done. What's actually going on here is a, a bending fracture. Instead of a fracture that creates that, uh, that uh, bulb of percussion. And the bending is initiated by a kind of a wiping motion. The, the biface is kept level, and the, in this case stone, is, uh, is struck kind of like a guillotine. There's a little bit of an angle to the, to the stone tipping in uh, to the flint. And when it comes down, when it comes straight down like this, it begins to scrape and, and, and of course push in. This angle keeps pushing it in. And at some point, it uh, has enough friction, enough energy to overcome the tensile strength of the subsidian and a flake is removed. And the flake that re is removed is the flake that the stone wants to remove. Instead of uh, blasting it off with a, with a, with a conchoidal fracture, it is actually ripped off or peeled off. And here, just to demonstrate, uh, I'm going to, I, I keep the, the biface uh, level to the ground. I'm, I'm going to strike it directly down upon it with a, with a slight tipping in of the stone, and it'll look like this. Let's watch that again in slow motion. And the, and, the, and the flake that has come off is going to look like this. In this case, it became two pieces. But the, you see how very, very little of the, of the edge was taken away. And yet, this lovely, broad uh, flake removal comes all the way from here almost reaching the, far, the very far edge. But that doesn't show up very well, does it? But at any rate, it comes almost reaching the far edge. This entire area is taken off. You could use a, uh, uh, a copper billet. I've painted it phthalo blue at the tip. We're not hitting the stone like this, but we're coming straight down with a little bit of an angle. And when it hits that, when it hits the edge, it pushes in a little bit and wipes it and tears off or peels off the flake. Uh, keep the biface uh, level to the ground and I'm going to use a, a direct up and down motion and it'll look like this. Thin, no bubble percussion, bending flake. In this case, actually, two little flakes came off. You can actually see that uh, I made two strikes, didn't I? And you can see that long scratch as it uh, uh, abrades along, tears along the edge, and finally digs in far enough and rips off the flake. flake. In this case, it ripped off this flake, left that little tiny piece of blue at the tip. You can see exactly where it hit on the edge of the edge. And then it continued moving and you can see the tiny, tiny little teeny bit of blue on the edge of this one. And it took off that incredibly fine flake. So there you have it. That's how you get a soft hammer flake with a hard hammer. The wonderful thing about using stone rather than anything else is that you can uh, strengthen the, the platform uh, on your, on your biface with the stone itself, turn it over, find that spot, hit that vertical stroke, that right angle stroke, tear off that edge bending flake, and uh, keep on moving on.